So our system is pretty much set up now. Um, there's a couple more things we need to do. <clears throat> you remember the eventual goal here is to write some C sharp programs that interact with the database. Um, so th this is something that's done a lot in industry. You know, if you go to work for a bank, they have these huge databases of clients and customers, and they interact. And you write these back office software programs that let bank employees interact with these databases. And so <clears throat> manipulating databases and, and also manipulating databases from within code is just a big part of being a, a programmer. And uh, something you need to know about to make the to make the big bucks. Here we've got our, our CS, our hello.cs file. Um, just so things don't get too cluttered, I'm going to make a new directory. <coughs> And the command for that is make dir, and I'll call it um, MySQL Explorations. And then I'm going to change into that directory. And let me close this. Uh, and OK. So um, I'm going to go, you can do this inside Ice Weasel if you want, um, but I'm going to go back out here and I'm going to search for. <coughs> Uh, my SQL C sharp and it'll bring up this awesome tutorial and um, so I want to go through this with you you could go through it by yourself some things go wrong uh, the, some of the instructions are a little bit out of date um, so maybe it'll be better if we do some of it together so uh, the first thing we need to do is install this um, so we already have some other things that we need, like we have already installed MySQL server client stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so let's install this uh, this CIL. So CIL, uh, sorry, CLI stands for Common Language something or other. It's basically the the um, .NET version of an executable. And I'm going to copy it and go back to my Debian system. And let's do sudo apt-get install and then paste it in. All right. But I don't think let's let's see if we still have to use 6.1. Okay. So see what happened. What I did was I I erased that 6.1 part and then I hit tab a couple times. And I got all these other options, and you can see that there's something more recent. So this has come out since the tutorial was created. So instead of 6.1, let's use 6.4. 6.4 um, and then tab complete. And hit return and type in the root password. And it's downloading this. This is the thing that we need to make our C Sharp program interact with the database All right and he says you need to know where it is so that you can tell um, so that you can tell the mono compiler where it is when you compile your C sharp code so let's just make sure that it's in the directory that he says and I have installed this once before and it is true that that's where it is on Debian but your mileage may vary if you are using some other system um, so we're su it's supposed to be in etc. And then is it MySQL? No, sorry, user lib client MySQL. <clears throat> um, so user lib cli MySQL data. Now notice ours says 6.4, whereas his says 6.1, and that's gonna. It's going to make a difference later, too, when we cut and paste some of his codes. They won't work unless we change this 1 to a 4. Now let's go back here. And you can see there it is. That's the, the DLL. Um, so it's the executable. Remember, the only difference between a DLL and an executable in C Sharp is that um, an executable has an entry point. It has a main function. So the DLL is just like you know classes and methods and stuff. All right, um, so this is awesome. And let's go back here. So here he installs the MySQL server, but we've already done that. And um, let's do this. So service to check, check whether or not it's running. 
So I'll come back and um, let's paste that. Whoops. Yeah, it's getting kind of irritating. All right, so maybe I'll just copy it. Um, so we might need to do this with a sudo <clears throat> service as uh, MySQL status. And there it is. So it is running. And I'm going to switch to Ice Weasel. I hate switching back and forth between the, uh, the Windows and, and the virtual box. So if Ice Weasel ever comes up, that would be nice. And let's type C Sharp um, MySQL. And here's the tutorial that we were going through. OK. And great. So where have we gotten? So we've checked the status. And what does this do? Check if the server is running. If not, we need to start the server, but it is running, so that's fine. Now we're actually going to log, or we're going to start using MySQL. So what does that do? So we'll do MySQL um, dash user root and dash p means prompt for a password. So I enter the root password that we picked out for MySQL and bang, here we are. Um, <clears throat> by the way, if you don't if you don't really know what MySQL is, it might be worth it to just um, type in SQL into the Google search bar, and then in the Wikipedia page, you can if you switch if you kind of you can read all that crap. Somebody goes to a lot of trouble to make the intro parts of Wikipedia articles sound really sophisticated and incomprehensible. I wish they didn't do that. But if you just come down here, you can get kind of a better idea of what's happening. I'm assuming that you know basically what a database is. Um, if you don't know what a database is, Google relational database. And you can read the Wikipedia article on that too. Basically, a relational database is, um, it has several tables in it. So here's a, here's a picture of a table. So a table just has columns and rows. So columns are, um, I don't know, they call them attributes here, but it's like, the qualities of, of the objects that are stored in the database, like, um, you know, what color they are, who owns them. Maybe we can... Actually, once we get down further in this tutorial, there's a nice example. Maybe we should just uh, skip ahead here. <clears throat> um, so here, there's some, there's some SQL code for actually creating a table. So first, or the first thing we're going to do in MySQL is create a database. But within a database, there are tables. And within a table, there are rows and columns. So here, he's he's making two new tables. Um, one is called authors. And so authors is going to be a table that has two columns. The first column is going to be the key. The second column is going to be the name of the author. And here he's putting in some, this is the SQ, so SQL is just a language for interacting with a database. And so insert into authors table uh, values, he's just putting in these rows. So the first row of the database is going to be Jack London, then he's going to be all these other things. And so you don't need me to explain this to you. We'll get, we'll get to that later. But um, so there are things called relational databases. They basically have rows and columns. And one implementation of the database abstraction or whatever is is handled by uh, MySQL, um, database service providing program. And SQL is um, a language that was written for interacting with databases. So this is just an open source version of MySQL, or open source version of SQL. So fine, um, shut up, Hunter. Let's do what uh, this thing tells us to. So the first thing we should do is type in show databases. By the way, if you like if you like this stuff, um, then you could become a database administrator. It's a database administrator if you learned a lot more about it, or possibly even not that much more about it than you know now. Um, what are we supposed to do? Show databases. 
and semicolon, and there it is. Um, so these are all the databases that are installed by default. Um, and the first thing that we're supposed to do in the tutorial is to actually make a new database. So create database mydb. Now we have created a database. And now we're going to create a user for the database. And for some reason, we're going to call him user12 at localhost. Um, and now we're going to give his password identified by, and now this is the awesome password, 34KLQ star, which is probably uh, an acronym for something totally psychotic that only this guy knows about. Now we're going to say use um, my DB. Now we're actually using our database. Um, so now we have to do some permission stuff. So grant all on, uh, oh look, my Dropbox finally finished updating all on mydb.star to this user, user12 at localhost. Localhost just means your computer. The server that we're working with here is actually your machine. And now we're supposed to quit. OK, bye. So now he talks a little bit about um, ado.net. And if you don't know anything about that, then you should read this and possibly some other stuff too. We're going to be talking about this in class, some important sentences here. So what ado.net does is unify access to relational databases. So there are several different sort of database service providing programs, of which MySQL is only one. And so ado.net lets you deal with those from inside your C Sharp program without worrying about this, with, with worrying as, about as few specifics as possible. Um, so these are the important um, <coughs> objects that are involved in ado.net, and we're going to practice using them. Here he summarizes what they are. So we're going to—you can see if you scroll down a little bit—we're not going to be declaring a connection exactly. Connection doesn't really exist. It's always prefaced by something particular to like the actual database service provider, which for us is MySQL. But we're going to be declaring a connection. And what the connection does is creates a connection to a spe specific data source. Like in, in our case, it's going to be our database, I guess. Um, and yeah, so there's also a command. Through a command, you can execute a, a SQL commands. If you want to see what some of those are, you can come back to the Wikipedia SQL entry. And here's um, so this is a this database has a table called book, and this is saying select everything from the table called book where the the price column has an entry that's greater than 100 and then order the results by the title column that's an example of a, a sql command so um, this um, c sharp object command which of course is going to be my sql command instead of just command down here here it is um, or or is it um, yeah, so actually we don't uh, we don't e execute any commands in this first sample code, so that'll come later. And um, data reader is a stream for getting data from the database. And then if you need to do some more intensive work with the data, you should use a data set object, and that's what it says in the rest of this little blurb here. All right. Um, so again, shut up, Hunter, and let's copy this. Sometimes, even though you could just copy it, I like to I like to type it, just so it, I feel like it helps me understand better what's going on. So I'm pasting it, though, just to save time here. I'm going to go into MySQL Explorations. He calls this, what does he call this file? Um, he calls this version.cs, so let's call it the same thing. Version... Yes. Okay, excellent. And you can see that now it's had syntax highlighting done so that it looks nice. Um, is that where you kind of zoom in and make this look bigger? I guess maybe it's not that easy. Hopefully you can see it. I'm sorry if you can't. Oh, that works, doesn't it? A little bit. 
Um, all right, so what is this stupid code going to do? Actually, it's it's really good code, and I'm very thankful that this excellent tutorial exists. Um, so what is it going to do? Here, um, he goes through and explains everything, too. But he's declaring a literal string, so string uh, cs. So what is this? Um, he's going to use this as he's going to open the connection with this string. So it says which server to use, localhost, that's your machine, which user to use, user 12, the user that we created just a few seconds ago, and this is the user's password. So we're going to basically log in as user 12 and use um, use this database that we just created, MyDB. And so here is a connection object, which is initially null. Now he tries these things. He tries uh, the connection is new, S, uh, new MySQL connection, and then he opens it with this string that we just created. And he tries to open it. It po possibly something could go wrong, in which case he has this catch statement. It's going to catch the MySQL exception and say what the error was. Otherwise, he's just going to use the connection to tell us the server version, and then the program will output that. So it doesn't do much, but it um, shows, shows us how the basics work. So remember how to do this. We do DMCS. Um, actually, if you just try this, it won't work because it says we're missing a reference. So it needs, it needs that CLL, that DLL that we were looking at earlier. And so let's scroll down a little bit, and he'll show us how to tell the compiler where the DLL is. And so right here is the magic incantation. We have to do, OK, so this is another place where we have to change the code a little bit. So let me just, um, if you use your middle mouse button, it will automatically paste things like I just did. Notice this is 6.1, but for us, we're not using 6.1. I think we were using. 6.6, um, right? I think. Oh, 6.4. And so I just hit tab a couple times and it fixed it. So now it should compile for us. And we get the executable. And I'm going to execute the executable. And it tells us the MySQL version. Fantastic. Um, and so I really think that you'll probably be able to finish the tutorial on your own. So go ahead and do that and email me if you have any more problems.